In Islam, nearly every facet is disputed to some extent amongst his followers. Examples were already given in previous videos about the moon sighting issue and in determining important dates. In this video, it will be shown even in relation to when to break the fast, there are disputes, with the majority of Muslims believing that the time to break it is at sunset. However, the Shia Muslims disagree and say it is at the night, a time after the sunset has passed completely. To understand this, attention needs to be turned towards the section of Quran 2187, which says, then complete the fast to the night. Here the Quran explicitly uses the term al-layl, which means the night. Notice it does not say the sunset, because if the Quran wanted to, it could have used the word al-maghrib instead to avoid any confusion. As this word is used in many other places in the Quran, just as an example, Quran 70, 40. The night is a time when there is no more sunlight in the sky. It is not when the sun is setting and it is still relatively bright. The Sunni Muslims disagree and say the night here is referring to as the sun is setting. The Shia Muslims take the verse upon face value and interpret night as the night in the literal sense. So from the Quranic instructions contained in the verses, they do not break the fast until after sunset by waiting a further 10 to 15 minutes when it is completely dark, and then they will break their fast. The Quranic verse uses the night alay. The definite article al is used. Grammatically, it is used to mean something that is specific or particular. This is opposite to the indefinite, which means non-specific or general. So the Quran, by using the definite article, is denoting something that the reader knows exactly what is being referred to. So when using the noun the night, it assumes people reading or hearing it knows what it means. Most people, when they read or hear the night, understand the term to mean a period of darkness juxtaposition in between the sunset and sunrise. This is the same whether in English or Arabic. People do not understand the word the night to mean the sunset, for that the word al-maghrib is used instead. The Sunni and Shia Muslims differ on the definition of sunset. However, by using the five daily prayers as an indicator, the Sunni Muslims say the period for maghrib or sunset prayers starts as the sun starts to decline and ends at the beginning of the night where another prayer starts called the Isha prayer. For Shia Muslims, they argue here there is a clear distinction because within the five daily prayers there is a separate prayer for sunset and another one for the night. Also they delay the Maghrib prayer thereby allowing the Isha prayers to be performed one after another. However on the details there are disagreements even amongst the Sunni Muslim schools on the definition of Maghrib for whom there are four major schools of jurisprudential schools. The Hanafi school established by Abu Hanifa has the largest following amongst the Sunni Muslims, approximately one third. They determine the end of Maghrib prayers when the yellow twilight in the sky has disappeared. According to an opinion in the Maliki school, established by Malik ibn Anas, and the Hanbali schools, the other prominent Sunni Muslim schools of jurisprudence, the prescribed time for Maghrib prayer ends when that red thread has disappeared from the sky. In an opinion of the Shafi school, the disappearance of the red thread marks the end of the period of necessity. At any rate, these times can be approximated by using the sun as a measure. When the sun has descended 12 degrees below the horizon, it is approximately equivalent to the disappearance of the red thread from the sky. Whichever way it is looked at, all of these definitions by these major schools of jurisprudence still break their fast before the night, because scientifically, the night is directly after what is called astronomical dusk. This is where the sun is 18 degrees below the horizon. 
Within the same section of Quran 2187, not only does it specifically mention the night by saying, then complete the fast to the night, it does not say to the sunset. In the sentence structure, the preposition to is used in the Arabic ila, which suggests it includes the night, not until or up to the night. The Sunni Muslims stretch the meaning by claiming the sunset is the beginning of the night, so the term night is covered in the definition. But the Quranic verse does not support this claim, because if it was sunset that was meant, meaning if it was meant to say until the night, before the night fully sets in, then the preposition hatta would have been used, a preposition that is found all over the Quran. In relation to the preposition ila, according to Arabic grammar, if someone says, I went, zahabtu, to ila, the house, al bayt, it does not mean the person went only to the door of the house, it can also mean they went inside the house. Conversely, to say they only went to the house but not inside, they would instead say, I went, zahabtu, until, hatta, the house, al bayt. In other words, up to the house, maybe to the front door, or around its vicinity, but not inside. The point is, the grammar within the Quranic verse suggests Muslims should fast to the night, not just before the night starts at sunset, as most Muslims currently do. To evidence that the Quran even uses the preposition ila to suggest it includes the noun that comes after it, Consider Quran verse 5 6. So wash your faces and your hands to the elbows, and wipe your heads and your feet to the ankles. This is in relation to ablution or udu in the Arabic. Muslims are required to perform before their prayers. Here the same preposition to ila is mentioned. In relation to this instruction, all Muslims, including Sunni Muslims, do not wash just up to, until, or the beginning of their elbow or ankles. Instead, they wash them including these parts, meaning above and including so that the elbows and ankles are washed beyond their borders. If ila too meant only to the beginning or starting point of something, then Sunni Muslims should not include their ankles and elbows when completing their ablutions. Rather, they should stop at the boundary or only to the limits of these body parts. As it is a point of contention, in the next clip is a short video from a prominent Muslim scholar who explains ila or two in the context of wudu, ablution, as well as fasting. He says that there is a person when performing wudu, he does not cover the ankles on the feet and he just washes half of them. Is this sufficient? The answer is no. You must wash the ankles because Allah says, ilal ka'bain, to the ankles, which it means that they are included in, not excluded, unlike the, surra, the navel and the knees, what's between them. No, these are included in the washing. Likewise, the elbows. If you, Allah says, wash your face and arms to the elbows. So the elbow starts here. If I end up before the elbows and said, this is what Allah said. No, this does not count. If someone fasts day long till night and he breaks before the night is due, before the sun is fully set. And he said, Allah says, ila layl ila layl No, this means that it is included. Part of the layl is included. Likewise, your ankles, your elbows have to be included when washing and Allah knows best. The, the reason why most Muslims include the body parts in their ablution and not up to is not because of the Quran, but because of Hadith. In Sahih al-Bukhari 165, Muhammad says, Perform ablution perfectly and thoroughly for Abu Qasim, that's Muhammad, who said, Save your heels from the hellfire. Incidentally, 
As the instruction for ablution or wudu is found in Quran 5.6, ablution is considered as an act of worship or ibadah. But worship should only be directed towards God, not to any person, not even to someone as great as Muhammad, as Muslims see him. Whereas in the Hadith, Muhammad is asking Muslims to do it for him, not Allah, for whom all worship should be dedicated to. To evidence the reason for the early breaking of fast by the majority of Muslims is not because of the Quran, but because of Hadith. In other words, Muhammad's sayings. It says in Sahih al-Bukhari 1955, narrated Abdullah bin Abi Ufa, we were in the companion of the Prophet on a journey, and he was fasting. And when the sun set, he addressed somebody, O oh, so-and-so, get up and mix sawik with water for us, sawik is body. He replied, O oh, Allah, also, will you wait till it is evening? The Prophet said, get down and mix sawik with water for us. He replied, O Allah's Messenger, if you wait till it is evening, the Prophet said again, get down and mix so weak with water for us. He replied, it is still daytime. The Prophet said, again, get down and mix so weak with water for us. He got down and mixed so weak for them. The Prophet drank it and then said, when you see night falling from this side, the fasting person should break his fast. So here is the answer as to why the majority of Muslims break their fast early. It is because they follow the Hadith of Muhammad than the Quran of Allah. It is because there is a Hadith whereby Muhammad is said to have broken his fast at the time of the sun setting whilst it was still light to daylight. The Shia Muslims distrust the Sunni Muslims Hadith literature, so do not follow them. A subject for another video are covered in the book Islam the Honest Truth. According to Islamic teachings, to break the fast by eating or drinking, even if it is a minute before its actual breaking time, nullifies the entire day's fast. It says in a well-known popular website called Islam Question and Answer, the full link is in the description, where it mentions a hadith whereby Muhammad described those who break their fast early will be punished in hell. Given the severity of the punishment, it would have been prudent for the majority of world's Muslims to err on the side of caution by breaking their fast later rather than earlier. Instead, they do the very opposite by breaking their fast at the earliest times. In relation to fasting, other aspects were vague. This is because Quranic verses were not clear enough, which caused confusion. For example, within Quran 2187, Another section says, and eat and drink until the white thread becomes distinct from the black thread of the dawn. At the time, the phrase of the dawn, Mil al Fajr, highlighted in blue, was not part of the original verse, so Muhammad's companions did not know what was meant exactly by the term white and black thread. They initially understood the verse to mean a thread in the literal sense, although it is a mystery as to how this could have helped them. But what they did was to put two threads, one white and one black, beneath their pillow. Or others would tie the threads to their foot and would carry on eating until they could tell them apart. Allah, who is claimed to possess omnipotent power, all wise and knows the future, seemingly did not know the verse in its original format was incomplete and that this will cause confusion. So he then had to add a few more words of the dawn to the verse later so as to make the meaning of the complete verse clearer. After these words were added, they then realized that what was meant by the white thread was the light of the dawn, the day, and what was meant by the black thread was the night. The following hadith explains this confusion. It is found in Sahih al-Bukhari. 1917 narrated Sahab bin Saud when the following verses were revealed eat and drink until the white thread appears to you distinct from the black thread and of dawn was not revealed some people who intended to fast tied black and white threads to their legs and went on eating 
till they are differentiated between the two. Allah then revealed the words of dawn and it became clear that meant night and day. With all the confusion and disagreements amongst Muslims, it is evident the Quran is not clear and its verses are still open to interpretation. In Quran 5.15, it claims the Quran is a clear book, Mubin. However, the evidence suggests it quite clearly is not a clear book. Verses needed to be added due to confusions. In an earlier video, it was shown how verses were taken away, in other words, lost. At times, they were forgotten, other times abrogated, changed, or in this video, open to interpretation. In Quran 3.7, it says that some of its verses are ambiguous, mutashabihat. So when the Quran says it is clear, as it does in 5.15, and then ambiguous, such as in 3.7, these are contradictory statements which are mutually exclusive and irreconcilable terminologies. The Quran cannot be both a clear book whilst it contains ambiguous verses. Quite evidently, its uncleanness is a cause of major disagreements, differences in opinions, the need to produce many volumes of commentaries and interpretations, and has been the cause of infighting amongst Muslims since the very beginning of its existence. So in conclusion, in Islam, nearly every facet is disputed to some extent amongst its followers. In this video, it was shown in relation to when to break the fast. The majority of Muslims believe that the time to break it is at the sunset time. The Shia Muslims say it is at the night, a time well after the sunset has passed completely. The Quran explicitly mentions to fast to the night, not to the sunset which obviously is not the same as the night. To avoid any confusion, disputes amongst Muslims and ambiguities, the Quran could have quite easily used words such as the sunset instead of the night, if that was what was meant. The grammar, context and when reviewed in relation to other Quranic verses, the verses indicate the preposition to or ila means to include the noun that comes after not until or up to, in which case the preposition hatta would have been used instead. So the Quran in its explicit verses, also in relation to other verses, and also the grammar suggests Muslims should fast to the night, not just before the night starts, as most currently do. Why Muslims break their fast early is because of Muhammad's saying found in the Hadith, not the Quran. Muhammad even instructs Muslims to perform acts of worship, such as the ablution, for his sake. However, any act of worship should be the sole reserve of God. The act of breaking the fast early, even if it is a minute too early, is considered a violation of the whole day's fast. The punishment is described as severe. So rather than err on the side of caution, most Muslims still end up breaking their fasts at the earliest possible time, which is at the sunset. There are disagreements, not just amongst Sunni and Shia Muslims, but even amongst the major Sunni schools of jurisprudence on what the definition of sunset is. Quranic instructions were vague. It caused confusion. Muhammad's own companions misunderstood the meaning of white and black thread. Further words had to be added to the Quran to alleviate the confusion. Despite the claims made about the Quran being a clear book, the disagreements, infighting and different interpretation of its verses show it is not a clear book.